This is uh, something I cherish. It's my great-great-grandfather Thomas Henry Snow's sporting journal with entries from 1851 to 1873. He kept a record and documented what his bag was each day. What I really like about it is that in addition to a summary of what happened on that day is the friends that he went with. Growing up in this little town in Rhode Island, I'm introduced to the outdoors by two grandfathers who love the outdoors, are hunters, anglers. And um, around our house, growing up, there's this a lot of art. And it's family art. Um, my dad was a wonderful artist. His mother, my grandmother, was a working artist for 60 years outside of Boston. And this is what she did. She got her start in the Boston newspapers in the 1920s doing fashion illustration and her studio had very thin very wide drawers where she kept her watercolor paper she had brushes stacked in probably coffee cans over to one side she introduced me to gold leaf she did a lot of um, americana work where she would find old trays and old uh, bellows small bellows and she would strip them down and then paint them. And using gold leaf and oil paint, she did theorems, which are oil on white velvet. I also have a great-great-grandfather who was a, a sporting artist in the late 1800s in Boston. He loved, um, loved bird hunting, loved fly fishing. We have a number of his paintings in our home uh, oil paintings primarily of his, his bird dogs, upland game, grouse and woodcock, brook trout. He was fascinated with Native Americans. We have a beautiful painting of a uh, Native American woman and child. I've been writing about art for 35 years. There's this legacy and this history of artists who have passed through the greater Yellowstone region and the Northern Rockies. When I think of Dave, I think of Mark Rothko on the one hand with Rothko's color fields, and then on the other hand, of course, the great Russell Chatham, um, who painted Southwest Montana. It's really hard. Um, to paint and uh, capture the differing moods of rivers. A lot of people go for the cliche, Dave never goes for the cliche, and one walks away after encountering his paintings as if you're entering a dream or coming out of a dream. I think that they have this trans-like effect on us.
My dad passed away a few years ago. He could paint anything. I've seen his old high school yearbooks and he had drawings that he had done of the school itself and uh, cartoons that he had done of various athletes. And in our home in Salt Lake, we've got cartoons that he did for New York newspapers of athletes in the 1940s, uh, late 1940s when he was in college. He painted architecture, painted old buildings. He loved shadows and angles. I remember after dinner, my dad would, on a napkin and a, with a pen, would often um, describe elements of art. For instance, he taught me the principles of perspective, uh, the railroad tracks converging on the horizon. Things that I took for granted then, but I realize now it was, it was a unique education coming from um, a wonderful man and a gifted artist. He used to kid me that I never put anything man-made in, in, my, in my art. I, I honored that by uh, occasionally I'll put a fence post or two in my paintings and I think of my dad when I do that. There aren't many fly fishers out there who really nail it when it comes to painting nature. And I think that that love that he has for water as uh, someone who relates to it uh, in a sporting way, I think that that translates, but foremost what emanates from his canvases is a sense of reverence for place. He captures the essence of place. So I feel pretty lucky being able to combine these two passions of art and fly fishing and being in places that inspire me. We have a favorite spot where we fish in the park and I was inspired to paint Dawn and Lavender. And um, interestingly, the paintings I'm most proud of are either Dawns and, or Dusks and typically Dawns. And um, this may go back to my childhood rising early to fish. Uh, I love that time of day. And these particular paintings elicit for me a certain joy in being uh, on a river, early morning, calm, serene, muted colors, the prospect and the, the hope of finding a fish. And when those times with friends and on the river and knowing that it's influenced by family. And um, when you're able to put that on canvas, it means a great deal to me.